you know, just really excited to see that. You're also going to be looking at doing one for us on uh, the active resistance training, which to me is, is pretty interesting as well. Uh, I work a lot with uh, law enforcement groups and, you know, trying to deal with that unstable resistance and trying to control somebody who may be uh, resisting arrest or something of that nature is, is a situation they have to come into quite often. So, sure. you know, we utilize it with those populations quite a bit. Uh, so, I mean, I guess just kind of to the point, you know, where did you, you know, come up with this idea and, you know, how have you used it in the past as well? You know, you might be disappointed with this answer, but, <laughs> but I'll be honest and say I can't remember where I was first introduced to the idea of using a water as a resistance. Uh, but it, it made perfect sense to me um, as a supplement to our more traditional type of training. So if you think about the type of resistance that a football athlete, a wrestling athlete, a hockey athlete encounters during competition, it's not a static resistance that a typical barbell or a dumbbell provides. It's an active resistance that really only water can provide because the water's moving back and forth the whole time. And so the athletes are having to train and control that active resistance, exactly what happens on the football field when they're attempting to block or tackle somebody. So, um, you know, it's certainly downsides of using only active resistance because the intensity of training is going to be less. Uh, you can't bench as much with a water-filled keg as you could with a barbell because the active resistance makes it much more challenging. But in terms of supplementing more traditional type of training with that active or dynamic resistant, to me it makes perfect sense. You know, they're going to encounter an active resistance during competition. They're going to encounter an active resistance in the weight room.